Next place, get on the back of my motorcycle down Pacific Coast Highway and smell the strawberry fields, sage, bonfires, and jet fuel. Smell what you've been missing. Kiss me up the 101 when 70 miles per hour feels like home. Home, it's a restaurant in Los Feliz where we're so quiet. You kiss me because I have nothing to say, nothing good to say. The next place, I miss you, I ran out of poetry. The next place, take the train from Fullerton. Do it on the day everyone moons the train. Kiss your favorite ass. That's me. It's not in the book. The last place, what was the name of that bar in the movie Chinatown? The one in San Pedro hidden at the end of Gaffey Street, where the former road just crumbles off into tide pools. The smash and graffiti of the dazzling cliffs. My life goes there. Way down there when your kiss is full and sharp like a mustard burger. Comes out to me, as desperate as our last dollar. Walkers. I think it was Walkers. Thank you. That kind of felt like when um, someone leaves the stage and they really want to do two more songs, but the clapping's not quite there. Then when someone says, yeah, one more poem. <laughs> this is a funny thing. Uh, sometimes when my friends win writing residencies, I ask them to invite me out so that I can be there and stay a little while and do some of my writing. And uh, I always tweet out that I'm at my writing residency and it's a lot. <laughs> and I wrote this to my friends and it's, if you've had a, something about this year that was a real fuck of a year, and uh, with some good spots. Hopefully tonight's one of them. This is called Mender Destroyer. And I know, yeah, thank you for shishing the person next to you. I really appreciate it. It's fuck, I, I, I actually love it. Thank you. This is my last show of a two month tour, and I just want to feel good, listen to Jay, maybe touch him a little weird, like I'm one of his kids, one of his many kids, and then have a bunch of beers with you guys, but not until the foreplay is over. And I can't do foreplay with a lot of talking. I'm sure you guys can't either. So, so thank you, thank you for touching me. It's a bunch of like, what the bro, what the fuck? Bro. They're my bro. These are my bros. I had a small gang when I was here called Smile Now, Smile Later. And uh, not a very successful game. I, I tried to have people join the game just for the summer. And uh, other games aren't into that. <laughs> Kristen and I were chatting about her breakup, her new life, how everything felt good coming towards her. And then her chair broke. And she fell to the floor like mashed potatoes. But she didn't cry, she just lay there stretched out, looked like an extra waiting for action to be called in a catastrophe film. When a poet eats it, they begin sorting out the meaning of all broken chairs, of all support surprising you, caving in suddenly, unsure of what sucks more, the bruise, or having to check chairs for the rest of your life. I helped her up and realized I had a feeling inside my body I never had before. I was mad at a chair. I felt rage against a chair. I threw this chair up into the air, swung it by the glass door, high, high into the backyard, and I watched it shatter in the grass. I screamed out, fuck this chair! This chair is from a forest of assholes! You didn't deserve any of it. Kristen then quietly went outside barefoot, collected the pieces from the grass, took it into the garage so she could fix it. She said, Derek, it didn't break. I broke it. So, so I can fix it. There you go.
lot of pity to myself. <laughs> or me. Just a book problems. Uh, no, I'm trying to snap out of it. So uh, this is a poem. I live in Texas now. And uh, I get... Uh, I get a lot of people asking, like, oh, God, Texas, ooh, you're going to die. <laughs> let me uh, let you in on a little feeling about this called All Hail the Kindness of Strangers. Ha, ha, ha. 